Hello everyone, how's it going? This is Piyush. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's look at how you can apply for your STEM OPT if you are a STEM student. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. It only seems like yesterday that we had applied for an EAD card and it's already one year from that time. Time really flies, but don't worry, I am here to show you exactly how you can apply for your STEM OPT. And this is only applicable for people who are having a STEM degree. The STEM stands for Science, Mathematics, Engineering and Technology. So if your degree falls in any one of these categories, you are eligible for the 24 month extension. So basically it is just two years extension for your degree. Like if you remember the OPT was valid for one year and if you have a STEM degree, you will be eligible for two more years. So for all the people who graduated in December 2023, now might be the right time to start our application or at least get to know what the STEM OPT application is because your EID might almost be on the verge of expiration and you all know that how slow the government is when it comes to processing of the applications. So you want to be proactive, stay on top of your game and make sure you start the application as soon as you can so that you receive the EAD card as soon as possible. One good thing about the STEM OPT application when compared to the normal EAD application is that even if you have applied for the STEM OPT application within the required time zones, your EAD expiry date will automatically be extended up to 180 days. For example, my EAD expiry date is the end of Jan. So even if my application goes through to the USCIS and it's in pending state, my end date that is end of Jan would automatically be extended by six months. That is, I think end of July or something. So that's a good thing. So you don't have to worry about when your EAD will come at your place or when your EAD is approved because if you remember the normal OPT application when you initially applied for EAD card you needed to have an actual EAD card before you can start working but as I mentioned like this is the STEM OPT is just the renewal of the initial acceptance of employment so it's not that strict but make sure you apply within the required time zone so you are on time and you don't face any difficulties. I want to thank two of my friends Anup Agarwal and Vishal Sundarraj for helping me out with my STEM OPT application, especially in navigating how to fill out the forms I-983 and I-765. So a big thanks to them. Also, you all can reach out to your seniors because most of them are more than happy to help you with your applications because they have went through that process. So it's easier to ask them rather than staying confused or researching through a lot of websites. So. I would highly recommend you all to reach out to seniors, reach out to people and ask for help. Now let's look at the application process for the STEM OPT application. The first step before anything is to make sure that you have reported all the information to your university. I was a student at Purdue, so I will tell you how it is done at Purdue, but I believe it should be the same or almost the same for all the universities. So if you remember, like you have to report your OPT or report any employment changes to your university within 10 business days. So if your employer changes or your supervisor changes or you switch to some other companies, you have to make sure that your university is aware about that because you will get an updated I-20. So before you start your STEM OPT application, make sure you have reported the up-to-date information to your university for Purdue. Like you have to log into my ISS account and make sure just you can Try to double check that all the information matches and nothing has changed. Different universities might have their own way of tracking the OPT. So make sure you know what your university requires. Once you have sorted out your OPT reporting with the university, the next step is to start filling out the form I-983. This form is basically a training plan which is to be filled by students as well as employers. So I will start sharing my screen and I will show you how you can fill your form I-983 because this is important as you need some signatures from your employer whether it's from your HR or your line manager or your supervisor so make sure you try to start it one or two weeks before applying to Purdue because this is required to be uploaded to the my ISS website at Purdue.
now that you have got your i983 sorted out and got all the signatures from your employer the next step is filling out the form i765 this form might be a bit familiar to you because even for the ead application the initial opt application we had to fill out this form to be sent to our university so again i will start sharing my screen and i will show you exactly how this form is filled it is quite similar to how we filled out the opt application but there are some changes so make sure you follow this carefully don't make any mistakes and include all the relevant information so let's get into it Now that you have filled out both the forms i983 and i765 you are all good to go and now the next step is log in to the my iss purdue website there is a section there which states f1 opt and in that you see application for stem extension so this is a very simple form you just need some documents handy that is i983 i765 ead passport etc so it's a one page form required by purdue and Again, I will start sharing my screen. I will resume sharing it and I will show you how to fill this form. It's very easy, but make sure you upload the correct documents and don't make any mistake.
congratulations now you have got your application done for getting i20 for sem opt but this is not the end step so be careful like once you get the i20 from your university the next step is to go to the uscis website similar to how you did it for opt application you have to go there fill out a form for stem opt upload all the required documents pay the required fee that is i think around 400 dollars and then your application is submitted so after your application is successfully submitted in the system you will get an acknowledgement receipt then your case will go in pending then it would take i don't know a few weeks or a couple of months to get your notice so i don't know the timeline for this honestly for opt for me it took around one month because i was proactive in my applications i applied as soon as i could and that's why i got it soon but let's see what the timeline is for stem opt but again as i mentioned that even if your case is in pending state you have got the application right your ead expiry date is automatically extended by six months so you don't have to worry much about it but just make sure if you're traveling out of us you need to have the physical copy of the acknowledgement receipt like if you come back from india to us and they ask at immigration you have that receipt which states that you have applied for your stem opt and just waiting for the approval notice to come in so you are good to travel if you see the university websites they clearly state that if your application is in pending and if you have the receipt you are good to travel outside the us so that's a good thing for us so yeah guys this is how the stem opt application is done the process is quite similar based on the universities like the first step is getting your i20 from your university the next step is going to your uscis account to apply pay the fees and get your application in the system the process might differ a bit in that each university might have their own portal for example purdue has my iss purdue your university might have other portals but the process remains the same you have to fill out these forms whether it's i983 i765 get your opt the stem opt i20 then go to uscs and get the application done as you saw the process is quite easy the only thing to note is that you don't want to make any mistakes because any mistake might cost you a lot like it might get your application delayed and i don't know if you need to submit the application all over again so you don't want to get into that situation try to be a bit smart and try to double check or triple check your application send it to your friends whom you trust so that you can verify that all the fields are completed i hope this video helps you with your stem opt application for purdue the timelines are you can't apply for your stem opt i20 before 90 days of your expiration date and no later than 21 days before your expiration date so make sure you fall within these deadlines to not face any challenges feel free to comment down if you have any questions for me like and subscribe my channel if you find my content useful please share this video with your friends so that they get their stem opt application done correctly and done on time thank you again for watching this video until next time